योग कर्मसु कौशल some other personality types investigative artistic social enterprising conventional and realistic so these are different kinds of personality types where investigative for example is a thinker he prefers scientific research and intellectual pursuits somebody who is artistic is a creator he prefers creative imaginative and intuitive pursuits a person who is social he prefers helping developing and has interpersonal pursuits people who are enterprising they prefer leadership influencing and persuasive persuasive persons they are persuaders conventional personalities are the organizers they prefer data management numerical and organizational pursuits people who are the doers are called realistic they prefer technical outdoor athletic persons so these are different kinds of personalities maybe we fit in some way here how can i go further without at least giving you a glimpse of some very popular famous and very authentic theories of personality i'm sure you heard about dr sigmund freud he has put up and given the very famous psychoanalytic personality theory freud's disciples who studied under him but later on had difference of opinion with freud because they thought that freud's theory was they criticized freud's theory and said that there are certain things which are not realistic in the personality like for example freud's psychoanalysis theory talks a lot about sexuality which his disciples whom we call the neo freudians hume adler from karen honey sullivan all these did not agree with freudian theory is also criticized for its negative aspects So when you read Hume's theory, Adler's, Fromm's, Karen Honey's theory, Sullivan's theory, you realize that their theories are more positive in nature to understand the standard. Rogers' self theory, Carl Rogers, Abraham Maslow's self actualization theory, Alpert Strait theory. Cattle's factor analytic theory, Bandura's social learning theory, Kelly's theory of personality constructs, Skinner's operant analysis, and Sheldon's somata type. These are just some of the several theories that I have brought in front of you. These form the basis in. psychology to understand the psychological aspects of the individual's personality so let's take up the psychoanalytic approach given by dr sigmund freud he was not a psychologist you'll be surprised to know i'm sure many of you know if you are from the 
English literature background or from the Gujarati literature background. He was not a psychologist. He was a very psychiatrist, medical man. But he has contributed so greatly that he's called the father of psychology. He's contributed so greatly. And what is fantastic about his theory, even relevant today, is that he understood the human being very well. Now here, we, he has talked about a lot of things, but since we are talking only about personality, we will just take up the important points. He's talked about the levels of consciousness, the structure of personality, anxiety and defense mechanisms, psychosexual stages of development, and dream interpretation. As we are talking about this, I will definitely like to tell you that these all help us, especially in the clinical situation, when you are a clinical psychologist, when you are a psychotherapist. These are some very important things which we need to understand about the client. Hence, I'm taking you to the details of these because somewhere or the other, sometimes when you need to understand your own behavior, some days when you're very angry, says, why am I angry? We'll be able to perhaps analyze and understand yourself better. And that is why today's presentation on personality is a very important one. The levels of consciousness. Freud has strictly talked about conscious, pre-conscious, and the unconscious. At this juncture, I would definitely like to tell you that at this very juncture, I would like to tell you that his greatest contribution was that of the unconscious mind. But to understand the unconscious mind, it is important to understand the conscious and the pre-conscious. So what is the conscious in the present state that you and I are in? That is our conscious state, our current thoughts and expressions. Like you are listening to the lecture, I'm talking here. So we both, we all are in the conscious state right now. You're very well aware of what is happening right now. If there are some thoughts going on in your mind, like as soon as the lecture is over and you have to leave and go somewhere, those thoughts are there in your mind right now. So conscious means your current thoughts and expressions. Preconscious. These are memories that are not a part of your current thoughts, that is your present thoughts, but can be readily brought to the mind. Let me give you an example here. Supposing when you were 10 years old, and you went to the beautiful land of Kashmir. So maybe currently, say you are 40, so it's very difficult for you to remember every detail. But when you go back home and you open up an old album, and as you're looking through the pictures, you remember, oh, I went to Gulmarg. Oh, I went to Kilanmarg. Oh, I threw, took the snow and made a ball and I threw it at my brother. My parents were having a fun time, even boating, this, because you see the pictures and it all comes back to you. So that is the meaning of pre-conscious. Now the most important part in this is the unconscious mind. Your thoughts, your desires, your impulses, of which we are largely unaware. But remember that they control your behavior. So you may be unaware of what is happening. You may be unaware of why am I doing this? Why am I behaving like this today? But something is happening in the unconscious 
and these thoughts, desires, and pulses are controlling your behavior. Anxiety provoking behavior, shameful experiences, unacceptable sexual or aggressive urges, these are all are part, a part of our unconscious. Let me give you one or two examples here in order to explain what I want to say. Like when you were a teenager and you had strong sexual, unacceptable sexual urges. So you wonder from where these thoughts are coming. What is really happening? But somewhere deep down, you have curbed them and they have been pushed in the unconscious mind. Because what you thought was not acceptable socially. It was not okay. How is it possible that I get such thoughts? Or for example, you just entered the school premises the very first day. And there's a banana peel which is there and you didn't see it and you slipped there. All college freshers are there and everybody is laughing at you. You're very ashamed of this experience. And you go back home running because you can't face everybody. Those thoughts which are anxiety provoking, they cause a lot of stress and anxiety to you. All these thoughts, desires, impulses are buried, as we call, in the unconscious mind. Can you see this picture? I like this image. It really beautifully describes the conscious level, the pre-conscious level, and the unconscious level. Just what we talked just now. I hope you have understood what I wanted to tell you. Structure of the personality. Personality is, according to Sigmund Freud, is made up of the Eve, ego, and the superego. So what is the eat? The eat is your desire. The eat works on the pleasure principle. It means to say that the eat only seeks pleasure in whatever you are doing. The eat wants immediate gratification. The eat is not going to wait for anything. Like your child, you remember? When you went to a mall and the child started screaming, shouting that I want this teddy bear, I want this teddy bear. You are trying to explain to the child that it is not possible for you to buy that teddy bear because it costs 5,000 rupees. And you do not have 5,000 rupees right now with you. But the child is not ready to understand because the moment he looks at that beautiful white teddy bear, he wants it. That's what I want to say, immediate gratification of the needs, primitive needs. It purely works on pleasure principle. Anything that gives you pleasure, I need to acquire that immediately. Ego. Ego works on the reality principle. Ego is your reason, your logic and will always keep the external reality in control for you. Will always remind you that look, shall I give you an example here? I think I'll be able to explain better. You are wanting to go abroad for a very long time. You really feel that if I go abroad, I really do well. But you realize that, you know, taking loans or the financial aspects are going to be very, very difficult for me. If loans are taken, they have to be given back. And I come from a family where this is not going to be possible. 
So I will do something which is very much possible here in my country. So this entire, you know, reasoning, logic, logic, uh, logicking out the entire situation, to use logic in this situation and pacify your mind. This will be done by the ego. The ego will become your reason, your logic, and will show you the reality. Maybe tomorrow, sometime later, when you're working for a big multinational company and you get a chance, you will go. But maybe today it's not possible. So don't feel bad. You, if you can't go today, it doesn't matter. You will go someday, but it may happen later. So this will pacify you and not trouble you. Super ego, your conscience. Your conscience is your moral development. Freud has talked about the slips of thumb. Sometimes you want to say something and you say something else. Moral development means what is right, what is wrong. Like you, let me give you an example here. Somebody's walking on the street and the person's, from the person's pocket, they drop a 500 rupee note. When they drop a 500 rupee note, the person just walks and doesn't know that it's fallen down and you are there. So it's quite obvious that there'll be a little conflict for a moment. Nobody's seeing, nobody's watching. If I pick it up, what's wrong? Nobody will even know about it. So if you have good moral development, if your conscience has been developed properly by your parents, the parental uh, contribution is very, very important here. When you are at home, when you start going to school, your teacher contributes a lot. Don't lie, Ramesh. I know you have not done your homework. So you say, sorry, miss, or sorry, ma'am. Yes, I have not done my homework. So this is how the teacher develops your conscience on moral development when you are in the school. So I'll share an experience where I went somewhere and that person wanted to say good luck to me, wish you all the best. And as Freud would say, there was a slip of the tongue and the person says, bad luck to you, Mrs. Mathur. And I was shocked for a moment. But it was a slip of the tongue. Later on, I came to know that where I was invited, that other person was to be invited. And hence, perhaps deep down, the person did not like me to be invited and he should have been invited. So this is the structure of personality, the E, the ego, and super ego. Just to complete my conversation here, the ego is like the bridge between the E and the super ego. The ego is like a bridge because when the E starts demanding a lot, do it, do it now, I want it right now, the ego will reason out for you and the superego will tell you, no, it's wrong to do it right now. This is not the right way to do it. This is not yours. You cannot take it. So there is a balance which is created. Look at this image. I liked it, so I thought maybe I could share it with you. This we've already seen, but this is a combination of the three levels of consciousness and the e, ego and superego. 